This is a six foot, 16 plat nylon bullwhip. It's very special to me. Not necessarily because it's built much differently from my previous whips, but more so who it's going to. This whip is going to a gentleman in Michigan who's 90 years old. When he was younger, when he was a child actually, his older brother bought him a leather bullwhip. It was a cheaply made bullwhip and it didn't last very long because it fell apart. Now almost 90 years later, he found my videos online. He contacted me and said, Nick, I'm 90 years old. I'd like to purchase one of your whips. And boy, was I inspired by this, guys. That there are so many little things that I do throughout my day. Important, some not very important. And a lot of the times I have to push myself to do them. Or in other instances, I will have this anxiety about learning something new. Oh, I don't know. I don't know if I can do it. But here you go, guys. This gentleman is 90 years old and he is getting back into whip cracking. If that doesn't inspire you, I don't know what will. So Bob, if this is your whip, I hope you love it. I want to talk a little bit about something that I'm doing new with my whips and how you might like it and you might feel that it'd be helpful to apply it to your own work. Let's talk about it. Hey everyone, it's Nick with The Whip Shop, and on today's video, I want to talk about branding your nylon bull whips. If you're a leather whip maker, you have the advantage uh, in so far as the leather is very easy to imprint your initials, uh, your logo, what have you. On nylon whips, it's more of a challenge to find a place to put your initials. And I think as an artist or as a craftsman, it's very important to brand our work. For a while, I didn't know how to do this, how to brand my whip, so I simply would not, unless I got an order for a wooden handle bull whip, uh, and then I would be happy because I would say, it's wood. The wood made it very easy to inscribe the letters NWS, and I would do so with a straight blade screwdriver. I would heat it up with a blowtorch and then just press it into the wood. And it was crude, but it worked. Shortly after that, I found myself in a thrift store in Florida, and I found an old typewriter. So I bought it for about five bucks and I ripped out the N, the W, and the S keys. And then I would just tap into the wood with a hammer. And that worked well, it really did. It was a step up from the screwdriver, um, putting the N, W, S in there, which just so happens to be the initials of my name. But that still left me with a problem with whips that were just strictly nylon and didn't have a wooden handle. For years now, I have been photographing every single whip that I make. So if it ever came up to where someone had a whip and they weren't sure if I made it, they could send me a picture and I could do pretty well looking at the picture uh, to see if it was a whip that I really did make. So this is what I came up with around the end of last year. I purchased a bunch of these. These are one inch, 20 gauge aluminum stamping blanks is what they're called. Along with those discs, I had this made. This is a punch that has my logo on it. And it's a 10 millimeter diameter stamp, basically, that you can stamp in metal, wood, leather, whatever you want. Uh, and I had this made through a company on Amazon. And speaking of Amazon, all of the products that I have, the tools in this video, there's a link in the description of this video at the bottom there. So if you use those links, I actually get a small percentage of each sale, which is kind of neat. So if you use those, that'd be awesome. Of course, as always, if you don't, that's fine too. The last addition to this system is a set of these numbered punches and numerals that go from one all the way up to nine. Of course, zero is included too. So this allows me to stamp the date or perhaps the whip number, which is what I do. I stamp the whip number into the whip and it allows me to not only brand the whip itself, but also number it, date it, whatever I wanna do. These are also in the description. And these are two millimeter 
letters. The letters themselves are two millimeters, and they have a, an array of different sizes. Same goes with the stamp. You don't have to get the 20 millimeter diameter stamp. You can get a larger one, a smaller one. I just found that that's what worked the best for me. And the company that I got this from, they did such a fantastic job. There are a lot of very small details in my logo. It doesn't really look like it from a distance, but there are. And this company did a really good job of turning that into a stamp. I don't know how they do it, but they do a good job. Now, branding a whip with your logo or your initials is not only the equivalent of signing a painting when you're finished. You get a lot of satisfaction out of doing that, but it also helps protect you as an artist. Unfortunately, believe it or not, there's people out there who will insist that you made a certain whip and they may sell it as such, uh, but doing this enables everybody to see the whip, to look at that end piece, the branding, and say, yes, that artist, that craftsman did indeed make this whip. Unfortunately, uh, stepping over that line, there are some people out there uh, who are a little bit insidious and have been thinking ahead, and they may just brand that whip with their own little stamps and what have you. So I think it's important that in addition to branding your whip on the outside in an obvious way, do something else that only you know about. Have something in addition to that obvious stamp with your initials on it uh, that you can quickly reference. If somebody brings me a whip and says, Nick, this looks like one of your whips, but I'm not sure. Uh, there's something that I can do in five seconds and I will know 100% if that is my whip or not. I'm not gonna get into the details of what that is for obvious reasons, uh, but do, do a little thing to your whip that only you know about and you can quickly point out to prove that it is indeed your work. So I'm gonna show you how I install these on my whips, but first I need to go feed my robin before it gets dark. Let's do that real quick. It'll just take one second. There's my bird, my robin, sitting on the back of that bench over there. Favorite meal are mealworms. All right, let's get back to work. All right, so we have here a hard surface. This just so happens to be a 100 pound anvil that I acquired several years ago. And it just works perfectly for stamping these little um, stamp blanks that we're gonna be using here. Uh, you don't have to use an anvil, of course. You can use concrete floor, even a driveway, just something very hard that's not gonna give when you whack it. So as you can see, we're gonna tear off the protective film on the face, just keeps it from getting scratched before we're ready to uh, put in our logo. Now this size just so happens to go along with the sizes of my heel knots, foundations that is. Um, please refer to this video up here to uh, guide you in creating a knot foundation that this one inch diameter uh, blank fits on. If your knot is a different size, you may need to use a different size of blank. But if you use the video up in the right-hand corner, that knot foundation will work perfectly with this 20 gauge, one inch diameter blank. The most challenging part that I found was just getting it lined up in the middle. All right, that looks like it's lined up and ready to go. I'm gonna take my hammer here, hold it from moving with my left hand and give it a nice whack like that. Now it's going to take a little bit of practice to get used to the pressure needed and how hard to swing the hammer. But here I'm going to go ahead and break this free. And now we can see my logo has been successfully stamped into the disc. This whip happens to be whip number 400. 30. So next we're going to be stamping the numbers. Found that these don't require nearly as much pressure to make the indentation because there's less surface area. You don't have to whack it quite as hard with the hammer. Once again there is a little bit of a learning curve. As far as the positioning goes, you're going to need to practice a couple times. So here's our four. Put it right here. A little tap. Four. So now we need a three, 430. So we'll put our three right here. And here's our zero. And there you can see our logo has been stamped with the whip number.
The numbers are crooked and the logo is not centered. Did he really put that on the finished product for his customer? No, I redid it. Working around the camera was very difficult and uh, that was just to show you uh, the process. So I just redid it without being hunched over the camera. Don't worry. What we want to do next is we want to flip this over the side opposite. This is the part that's going to be making contact with the heel nut foundation top, the heel of the whip. So what we're going to do is take a rasp and I want to scuff this up. Shiny things tend to not stick very well to a surface. So I'm doing this just to give that glue or epoxy some more options and more divots and craters to adhere to, to make this a stronger bond. Still haven't learned how to use a rasp, friends. I'll get it someday. There we go. As I understand, one direction is the way to go. Otherwise, you will mess up your rasp. Anyway, so there we have it. This is all scuffed up. As you can see, that's our good side. And this is the part that's going to be stuck to the end of our whip. So this is what this is going to end up looking like. As you can see, the edges of our knot are flowing over a very sufficient portion of the disc. All right, well, here is our heel knot foundation. Once again, if you are wanting to get to this point, please refer to my uh, herringbone knot tutorial. There's a link in the description. The first few minutes of that video goes over how to achieve this exact heel knot foundation. So I have here our logo with our little stainless steel disc here. And this is going to be mounted right on here with the use of this CA super glue, essentially. So I'm going to take some here. I'm going to spread it over the heel like this. And I'm just going to simply put this in place like that. Make sure it's centered. Give it a little press with my palm. Not going to allow that to cure. And then we're going to go ahead and tie the knot. So the glue holds it in place permanently and the edges, the bites of our knot, are going to be holding this in place permanently. And the glue keeps it fixed and keeps it from spinning. All right, at this point, the glue is hardened and I have here a piece of parachute cord and I'm going to be tying a two pass seven by six Turk said knot. I have a link in the description if you're interested in learning all the details behind this knot. I'm not going to be showing everything in this particular video. This is just more so to show you guys how this knot works with this disc. As you can see here, I already have two little bites forming. And you can see how the edges of that disc are going to be covered, but in the middle, we will be able to see our album, our M, <laughs> we'll be able to see, but in the middle, we will be able to see our little logo there with the whip number. So let's proceed with this knot. So as you can see, here's the first pass. This is currently a five by four. Now we're going to expand it to a seven by six. So here is the completed seven by six Turks had not single pass right now. And I'm about ready to cut a black strand of parachute cord um, to add a second pass to this knot. As you can already see, we can notice that the edges of that disc are covered by the edge, by the uh, bites of the knot. It's kind of a nice look. If you ask me, I like that. So let's proceed with our second pass in black. So as you can see here, this is the finishing up of the first pass and I've attached the black strand there and we can proceed with following the leader of that first red strand on the right side. There's a video up there in the upper right hand corner that will help you tie these knots while avoiding some common problems right up there in the right hand corner. Check out that video. I think it's going to help you. So let's proceed with tying this Turk's head knot. Continuing the knot, we only have, after we descend from the top here, two more bites to do. So you can see there, coming off the side like this. And 
and under these two through here and back up again and now we are at the last bite as you can see it's just a tad bit lopsided but we still have a lot of authority and control over the shape of the end of that knot so we can still move things around with our fingers and one of the beautiful benefits of waxing the whip is it locks everything into place it tightens those strands and constricts them so the final shape of your knot becomes permanent so we'll just finish this up on camera I had some people asking me what I thought of Bitcoin <laughs> um, I uh, wish I bought Bitcoin in, you know, 2017 or earlier, I guess. I, uh, I bought a little cryptocurrency. I didn't do anything crazy. Um, I didn't feel like that was a... I, I know little to nothing about, about stocks and investing. But over the past few months, I, uh, I did put a little money into Bitcoin and also uh, more, more money into Ethereum. And uh, quite honestly, it, uh, it doubled. I got in early in, at the beginning of this year, and it's actually given me a little bit of a return. Of course, it's all fun and games, um, you know, adding to your portfolio and the uh, exchanges, but the feds are, are waiting for you as soon as you're done shopping in um, cryptocurrency world there. They were waiting outside to take you by the hand and say, hmm, how much do you owe us? You know, so that's always a thing. I haven't cashed any of it out yet, so it's still sitting in there. I use Coinbase as my uh, blockchain or exchange or whatever you call it. So you don't even know what to call it. But yeah, I, I, uh, I got a little bit. I figured, uh, why not? You know, I wasn't wanting to be stupid about it and put all my life savings in it, but I put a little bit and it, it did, uh, did make a little money. So anyways, uh, this is the end here. This is the final result. Things got a little shifted around. You see how this V here is? I wanted those numbers to be more so like this. So look at, I can just still move this around like that. I can twist the knot. Look at the sides there. We can push these in around a little bit. And there we have it. This is a two pass seven by six Turk's head knot. You could also do a herringbone knot, which is uh, in the description if you're interested in that type of a knot. But I figured I would do one of these because I think it just looks nice, that little lightning zigzag pattern with the red and the black. So there we go. Let's give this thing a roll. I'm going to wax this whip. Uh, first, I got to tie on the transition knot. Then I'm going to wax it and we'll meet back up with you. I'll meet back up with you. Well guys, this whip is complete. It's finished, I just waxed it, and I'm about ready to give it a few test cracks. But uh, Bob, thank you so much for your order, my friend. You are an inspiration to me, and I'm sure so many others. Thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please do reach down and hit that subscribe button. A lot more tutorials on the way. Thank you guys so much, and I will see you all in the next one.